McGill Big Three Part Three. So if you're advancing to these types of exercises, typically it's going to mean that you would have little to no lower back pain whatsoever, and you're gonna use these exercises as you would with the other ones to help build that good solid foundation throughout your core muscles, 360 degrees, nature's back belt, so rectus abdominis, you got your obliques, transverse abdominis, and then your erector spinae. You're building these muscles again. We're at a point here with the first level of McGill, we're at a low tissue tolerance, second level of those exercises, and now we're up here with a higher tissue tolerance, but still, we don't want to exceed our loading capacity. We're just trying to build that loading capacity. So for my bird dog variations, what I'm gonna do now is any type of three point plank or two point plank as you've already seen in the program so what we're doing it's an anti-rotation exercise anti-extension as well so with my three point plank what I'm going to do is hands close together feet wide and you always want to make sure you're pretending to have that cup of water on your back and then from here I'm reaching out and I'm holding nice and strong very low movement and then I can do the same side again reaching out holding or I can switch to the other side. The other option you have is to make it even harder. You can turn it into a two-point plank. So I'm gonna keep it the same, hands close together. I'm gonna to lift that leg up, arm comes out, we hold, we come down, little pause. Lift that leg up, arm comes out, hold, little pause. And then another variation, there's so many different variations of these exercises, but another variation would be to do so from elevation. So if you had something like a workout bench, you can use your stairs as well. Go on the second stair, the third stair, place your hands there with your feet on the ground. Perform either of those two exercises, whichever one sort of suits your skill level and be nice and challenging, but a little bit easier than doing it from the ground if you find that you can't maintain that stability. In terms of our side plank, what we're going to do, personally, I love this exercise. I find it very simple and very challenging, and that's what I'm all about. You're gonna take a dumbbell or any type of weight really, but I like a dumbbell because I can put that handle of the dumbbell right on my hips and then from here, perform my side plank holding strong for about 10 seconds and then I'll rest, I'll pop up, same thing, hold strong for about 10 seconds and then I rest. All your typical side plank, side plank rules apply. You want a straight line from your head to your toes. You want that top leg out in front. With this variation here, typically you've mastered the plank from the floor and you can do so and hold it relatively easily for 30, 40 seconds, multiple sets of multiple reps of 10 seconds. That's when you start adding the weight, but only once you've mastered that plank from the floor. So if you're still doing a plank from your knees or you're still doing a plank elevated on a bench, you don't quite want to get to this variation yet. And then for our curl up, what we're going to do is a modified dead bug. So two ways I'm going to modify my dead bug here. Way number one is I'm going to take a band and then I'm going to anchor it around something similar to our dead bug with a wall push or a curl up with a wall push. So if you're doing a curl up, you got one knee down, you got one leg up, you're going to place, I want a little more tension in the band, so I'm going to come out a little bit, enough tension so that I can feel it really engage the top of my abdomen here, and then from here up and hold, or with the dead bug variation, both legs come out, up, hold, and then come back, and then reach out again. Back in and back out. Back in and back out. So curl up's gonna be a little bit easier on your back. Uh, so you can start with that and then progress to the dead bug variation where both your hips are at 90 degrees and one leg is coming out, coming back in. The other option you have is if you don't have a band accessible to you, or you don't have anything to wrap it around, you can perform the same exercise. I'll do it from a side angle view this time. We're really just holding, and then from here, it's reach back a little. Bring that plate back in, reach back. Bring that plate back in. So probably a little bit harder with that variation as we reach back with our band here. It's gonna help us to keep our rib cage down. As I reach with that plate back, it's going to actually try and force my ribs to flare up. So I gotta stay that much tighter and be that much stronger to keep a neutral spine. So again, as you can see, this is called anti-core training. 
founded by or researched by and the philosophy came up through Dr. Stuart McGill and he, his research at the University of Waterloo. With anti-core training, so many things you can do and ultimately you just want to continue to build up that tissue tolerance, increase load capacity, which will transfer over to being very resilient for everyday life and also to help to make you stronger in the gym.